All right, let's add some additional attributes to this table tag and look at how they affect our tabular data. So the first one we're going to look at is an attribute called cell padding. So we're going to say cell padding equals, and let's just set this to 10, 10 being 10 pixels. Actually, I'm going to set this to 20 to over exaggerate it a little bit so you can see the effect. So I'll set it to 20. I'll come back to my web browser and watch what happens when I refresh this page. So you can see that now there's 20 pixels of padding around each cell, which is kind of this invisible cushion. So the contents have 20 pixels around them on all sides. That's what cell padding does. And you can see there's a slight, um, a bigger gap in here between the header row and the contents of the table. Another similar tag to cell padding, or similar attribute rather, is called cell spacing. And it does basically um, the same thing. I'll set this one to 10 as cell padding, except it's the it's the space in between the cells. So when I refresh here, you'll be able to see that. So cell spacing affects that space in between each one of these individual cells. That's what cell padding and cell spacing do. And we can also set a height and a width to our table. So let's set this width equal to six, or actually let's do 500 pixels and save. And let's jump back to our browser and refresh here. And you can see now that refreshes this so that the entire table is 500 pixels wide. Now I'm actually zoomed in a little bit here in my browser, you can see that. So if I was back at, all the way back at 100%, it might be slightly different than yours. But uh, so that width value is the overall width of the table. Now something interesting about tables is they kind of automatically stretch and shrink the columns according to the content. So if I was to have this column one, and with more stuff, let's save and refresh this. You can see that it automatically grows to accommodate the additional content. And these other two columns automatically shrink. But the overall width is still 400 pixels. So they'll kind of auto adjust themselves according to the contents of their individual cells, which is kind of a nice feature of these tables. Now controlling the tables beyond this, we're probably going to want to move into CSS. If I want to control the height of individual rows or the width of individual cells, you would need to use CSS to control some of those properties. There are properties which are just like these widths and heights up here. You used to be able to come to a table data cell like cell one here and say height equals, let's say 200 for 200 pixels. Let's save that and refresh. And you can see that makes that particular data cell 200, which also affects the entire row. Now height and width are deprecated tags now on the TD tag, meaning they're not supposed to be used anymore on the table data cell. CSS has kind of taken over the responsibility of assigning widths and heights to your table, um, but it still is uh, valid to use on the table tag. You just can't use width and height on the TD tag. Now it gets a little bit confusing because there's a couple of additional properties here, which I'll mention. One of them is align. So I can come up here to my table and I can say align equals right. And if I save and refresh, this is going to take this table and align it to the right side of the page. Now this, however, is a deprecated tag. You are not allowed to use align equals right on the table tag. So it's deprecated. And again, CSS is supposed to take responsibility of doing that these days. However, on the table data cell tag in XHTML, align is perfectly valid. So I'm going to show you an example of what align does um, on the table data cell tags. So I'm going to take up here and I'm going to add a height to my table of 500 as well. Come back and save and refresh. And this particular table um, in order to illustrate how this works, I actually need to add height on this particular row. So I'm going to add a height of 200 again. Again, that's deprecated, but this will illustrate how the align property works. So I'm going to come in here to this first data cell. So TD, where the first one is, and I'm going to add align, oops, align equals right. And what this does is it aligns the contents of the cell to the right side of the cell. So for a line, I can either say left, you can kind of see what that does. I can say center, that's going to center the content, or right, we'll put it on the right side. 
You can also vertically align content using the property V align. So V align, I can say top, and that will stick it at the top. Middle puts it in the middle where it was, the default is middle, or you can say bottom, and that'll put it down on the bottom. So that's how you can align things. So if I want this to be in the bottom right, I would V align bottom and align equals right. And that would stick the contents of the cell clear down there. And you can do that for each one of the table data cell tags if you needed to align them in a particular way. So again, that's kind of a, a useful feature when you're building your tables to be able to align rows or columns to the left and the right. You can also do this with CSS. And so it might be a little bit easier to do with CSS, but I just wanted to show you how you can align particular elements inside of a TDE tag to one or the other. In the next tutorial, we'll look at merging.